Here is a very simple rate half convolutional code encoder where you have a shift register. Okay, there are three shift registers so that whatever comes in then moves along, moves along and then pops out. You can see that the contents of this shift register, this one and this one is then modular to add it to produce a single code digit where the operation of the modular two is simply the XOR logic gate. Okay, that's just simply XOR logic. And the contents of this shift register and this one are modular two added to produce the second code digit. And in this case, you can see that this and then this are multiplexed to produce the output stream. Now, unlike block codes where K digits enter and n digits exit where if you think back to a block code okay so you've got n digits n digits code words coming out of here this code word is independent of this one is independent of that okay in the case of convolutional encoding that is not the case you can see that in this particular case one digit enters and two come out so the code rate is a half k is equal to one and n is equal to two but that single digit which enters here will then move along here so that this is how it will look. When the first one is inside here, two will come out and then it'll move along and then the zero will enter and then it'll be over here like this. This is how it will look. And you can see that the output code digits will be influenced by the previous inputs, okay? So that's the main difference between convolutional encoding and simple block codes. Indeed, the constraint length of a code if you have a code rate of one upon n, okay, in other words, k is equal to one, so that a single digit enters and we have n of these outputs. In this case, we have two, but if we had three, in other words, one, two, three, then that would be a rate one third code. k, the constraint length, would simply be the number of shift registers, so that in this particular example, it's equal to three, one, two, three. Constraint length is actually the number of shifts over which a single input digit can influence the encoder output. And you can see that the number of shifts is one, two, three. The input sequence that I'm going to look at is one, zero, zero, one, one, which is also shown in this table here where this is the first input bit, then this, then this, and so forth. And for now, ignore what is meant by the state. We will come back to that. What is shown in this table is the output two digits for the particular input, okay? And remember that it's all interrelated, okay? For example, the very first bit, let's put that inside here, one. Now, the encoder always begins in the all zero state so that this would be zero, 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 and then the one comes in. And you can see that one and a, a zero and a zero gives you a one. Remember, just simply count the number of ones. If it's odd, the output is a one. If the number of ones is even, then the output is a zero. So the first output code word is one one, okay? You can see that the very first code word is one one. Then the one moves along and we have the zero inserted and this is still a zero. And so we get a one here and we get this and this gives you a zero. So then we get the second one, okay? Then the one moves along and zero and zero enter. And now we have this, this and this giving you a one. 1 and a 0 gives you a 1, so this is now correct. And then the 0 moves along and we get 0 and then the 1 comes in. And in this case we have 1 and a 1. And now we just have the final 1 to enter so that the contents of the registers is 1, 1, 0. And then in this case we have an even number of 1s so that this is 0. Okay, 1, 1, 0, so that's 0. And then we get the final 1 and so we get the final output code word 0, 1. As you can see, it's being multiplexed so that the output is 0, 1. This is the first code digit. This is the second code digit. This output sequence would be influenced by the bits which enter, okay? It's all intertwined so that this code word here does not depend only on this, but it depends on the previous inputs, okay? This is the first input, the second, the third, the fourth, and the fifth, and this code word depends not only on that but on this and this. Now for a rate 1 upon n code, the state of the encoder is defined to be k minus 1, which in this case is 3 minus 1 which is 2. In other words, the two shift registers which are shown highlighted is defined to be the state of this encoder. 
and you can see that the state of the encoder, which is the contents shown there, began in the all zero state. Okay, that's where we began. And then the state became one zero. So we went from the all zero state, we went from zero zero to the state one zero, as you can see here. And then the state will become one zero as shown here. And then zero zero, because the one moves along, once again, I'm only looking at the contents of these two, so that these three have come inside here, and then you can see that this zero will move along here, this zero will move along here, and this one will come in, so that the state becomes one zero, and the final state is one one. So it's simply the contents of the k minus one shift registers for a rate one upon n convolutional code encoder. Now, why am I interested in looking at the state? Well, That'll make sense as we move along. Now let's do the same example again, but I will now show you the encoding process on what is referred to as a state diagram. So the state of the convolutional code encoder began in the all zero state, okay? So that the contents was zero, zero. So that this is where we begin. We began here. And let me refer to that as a little box. Let me show that as a little box. And then the input was a binary digit one. A one came in here, which then entered here. And so that you can see that the state went from zero, zero to one, zero. So here is the next state. So we went along this path and we moved to state one, zero. What this diagram is showing you is the bit that was input and the output code word. So that this was the input, as you can see, and the output code word is 1, 1. The next bit to be inserted was a 0. Now remember, we're now in this state here. We're currently in this state here. So that we input a 0. Well, input a 0 so that we move along here. And the output code word is 1, 0. Output code word is 1, 0. And now we're in the state 0, 1. So we're now here. And then the input is a zero. So the input, this is for input one, this is for an input zero. So then we move along here and you can see that the input is a zero. The output code word is one, one. And we move from this state to the all zero state. So we're now here. And then let me use a different color. We're now back here again. And the input is a one. So then we move back along here again and we moved from the zero, zero state to one, zero. This is now the new state. The input was a one and the output code word is one, one. And we're here now. And then the input is a one. And so we move along here. The output code word is zero, one. And the final state is one, one. So we can actually follow the operation of the convolutional code encoder on a state diagram. Let me show you something interesting. Suppose I wanted to bring the state of the encoder back to the all zero state. I want to move from here to here. Well, you can see that I just have to insert a zero and I have to insert another zero. So that if I was to insert a zero and a zero, then the state would move from one one to zero one and then it would move to zero zero. And the output code word would be, in this case, zero one, this one here, and then finally one one so that if i was to insert one zero zero one one and then flush the encoder so that the state goes back to zero zero you notice i only need two zeros to flush the encoder back to the all zero state this is the only part that's important not this then i need to add two zeros and i work my way down here and the output code word would be zero one and one one now, why am I showing you that? Well, we're going to look at the operation of this encoder via some maths, and you will find that the mathematics will automatically flush the encoder with two zeros so that we will always end up back in the all zero state, so that we will recover these two code words as well. Just to make another final point, suppose I take an input sequence at random. Suppose the input is, it can be any sequence at all. Let's play around with that very quickly. We always began in the all zero state, so we're here, and the input is a zero. So then we would, in this case, move from here to here. The output is zero, zero. And then, so that is done. Then we're back in the all zero state, and then the input is a one, so that we move from here to here. 
so that the output is 1, 1. And then the input is a 1, so that we move along here. We're now in this state, and the output is a 0, 1. And then we insert a 0, so then we move from here to here. And uh, the output code word is 0, 1. Now we're in this state, and so on. And you can just keep on going along. The point that I'm trying to make is that for any input sequence of any length, you can keep on moving through this state diagram, okay? You can loop around here, you can come here, here, loop this way, back and forth. And all that will happen is that the state of the encoder, which you can see is only two binary digits, so that the state of the encoder can only be one of these. There are only four possible combinations. In other words, the state could only be 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, or 1, 1. So we have four possible states. In other words, we actually have 2 to the power of k minus 1, where k is the constraint length, and k was 3, so 3 minus 1 is 2, and so we get 2 to the power of 2, which is 4. So we know that the number of states is 2 to the power of k minus 1, and we also know that any sequence of any length at all, whatever length, is simply moving through this state diagram. The state table for this convolutional code encoder is shown here and once we have the state table we can easily draw the state diagram. Now how do we find the state table? Well we know that there are only four possible states because we know that the state is this and we know that k is equal to 3 so that 2 to the power of k minus 1 is equal to 4. And what we do is we write down all four states as shown here. And we know that for any given state, the input could have been a 0 or a 1. So we've taken account of all possible situations that could ever occur. And then we simply write down the final state in the output code word. So that if you take a look at this, let's take this example here. The initial state is 0, 0 and a 1 is going to come in then you know that this will become a 0, 0 will move along, this will become 1, and you can see that the final state will be 1, 0. In other words, it'll be this one, 1, 0 will be the final state. So you can simply read off these two, 1, 1 is the final state, 0, 1 is the final state. So it's easy to find the final state. And then you know that this, this, and this will be the entry inside here, so that you can easily find that code digit here by simply taking the modular 2 addition of all three so that 1, 0, 0 gives you a 1. That's a 1. This should be a 0, a 1. Okay, just simply looking for odd number. So this should be a 1. So that's easy to find. And then you simply take these two to find the second code digit. So that would be 1 and a 0 gives you a 1. 0 and a 1 gives you a 1 and so forth. So that it's very easy to write down this column and this column once you've written down all possible states and put in 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1 along here. And then from here to here is simply a matter of reading off this table and drawing the diagram.